Hey, 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 what's happening to gold? We've had such a nice run over the last few weeks and a huge red candle yesterday. Are the good times over? Let's talk about that. Welcome to myfinanceteacher.org, where we analyze a range of commodities, precious metals, general stock markets, cryptocurrencies, and even look into some fundamentals and technicals of particular gold and silver miners. If you like the content, I would highly appreciate it if you hit that like button and share the video with your friends. Now let's uh, come back to gold, but first let me actually jump into the US dollar, the DXY index. Looking at gold, I often like to look at DXY index. And DXY is a little bit puzzling over the last few weeks, but whichever way this puzzle, whichever way this dilemma is resolved, it doesn't really affect our analysis that much. The puzzle is about the dollar cycle that started over here at the very end of February. My dilemma here is whether that cycle finished over here at the end of April, which would give us a cycle that is pretty close to a usual duration of around 63 days. And since then, are we observing a new dollar cycle, which perhaps finished over here in the second half of May at one of these lows, giving us a relatively short cycle lasting for much shorter than usual of around uh, one month or so. Usually dollar cycles last for just under two months. So we have seen actually one month cycles in the past, but they are quite unusual. Extremely long cycles are also somewhat unusual. Some of the recent extremely long cycles we've seen are over here in the first half of 2020 lasting for 83 days whereas at current times if the cycle that started at the end of February didn't actually finish at the end of April if it had been ongoing until the end of May that gives you a really unusually long cycle of 89 days I think perhaps this is the correct way to count this cycle although it's unusually long but in either case, we are now in a new dollar cycle that has been only going on since 25th of May. And I think we will still see strength in the US dollar, perhaps at least over the next few days. That's because the cycle is pretty young. Some of the targets on the upside for the US dollar is, of course, poking a couple of times above the Bollinger Bands. And that comes very, very close to that 50-day moving average, which might prove to be a resistance zone. That's somewhere about 91 on the DXY index. And that's kind of important for us because of the relationship between the US dollar and gold. Sometimes this negative relationship, as you see at the bottom side of the chart, does break down. Sometimes it even turns temporarily positive. This is a 20-day correlation coefficient between DXY and gold. But at the moment of the last several weeks, this correlation coefficient has been strongly negative. That's why we want to have a look at what's happening to the US dollar before we move on to gold. And what's happening in gold is that it's actually coming down into its cycle low, which is um, pretty normal. Actually, over the last uh, couple of weeks, as the members at myfinanceteacher.org know, I have been de decreasing my allocation to precious metals from full allocation. And I have four pieces to my portfolio, so that's down from around 25% of allocation down to about 19 under 19% right now. And I'm looking forward to go back to 25% portfolio allocation, that's full allocation to precious metals, uh, just over the next um, few days, I think. So what that means is I think gold perhaps hasn't really finished coming down because, well, look at it. So far, we've only seen a couple of days of gold going down after this uh, relatively strong rally into the first half of the ongoing cycle. By the way, this cycle has been going on for 36 days only. And usually the gold cycles last anywhere between one and a half to two and a half months. So if uh, this cycle continues for another couple of days, another few days, that will bring it much closer to the average duration, which will be a better sign for a cycle low actually taking place 
very close to a lot of target zones coming up together, a lot of support zones coming up at the same time, which are the 200-day moving average at around 1840. This downtrend line that gold had been respecting all the way since summer 2020 until it broke this downtrend line more recently in the middle of May. And once you break such a long-term resistance zone, it's only very natural for prices to retest that resistance zone before continuing higher. And um, yeah, you might argue that today gold came close to retesting that resistance zone, but um, I do feel that gold has another couple of days perhaps of downward momentum, again, partly because of dollar going up, partly because I see more support zones a little bit lower than even this downtrend line. This, I've mentioned this 200-day moving average. And also there's this high from first half of May, that's also around 1845. And if you throw in this uh, Fibonacci numbers, on the ongoing cycle starting from uh, late April, you'll see that the 50% Fibonacci retracement, which is uh, one of the common retracement areas, is also close to uh, this bunch of support zones coming up together. This 50% retracement is at around 1837. As I've mentioned in a lot of my previous videos, when you look at the Fibonacci retracement numbers, the most common retracement levels are the 38% retracement, which actually gold did kind of nearly touch today at today's low. Another common retracement level is that 50% retracement as well as the 62% retracement, which is at about 1818 on gold. Although you might argue that uh, today's candle, at least so far, looks a bit like a dragonfly doji candle, which might uh, indicate a reversal from the decline into a rally. But again, as I mentioned, I think we have to observe what gold does over the next couple of days. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. And the next thing to have a look at is the gold optimism index. And I'm going to compare what's happening in the ongoing cycle starting in March this year to the cycle in mid-2020, early 2020 and mid-2019 with an exception of the cycle of early 2021 because that was a broken cycle giving us a lower low which was a part of this continued downtrend line since August last year. So uh, as you see usually after a cycle low, after the initial rally, it takes time for the markets to digest the rally a little bit before it can push to the next rally of the ongoing intermediate cycle. And uh, looking at the optimism index, after a strong rally in optimism, after everybody gets really, really excited about precious metals, there are usually a couple of dips in this optimism index. These circles indicate the first dips, and often there is a second dip, which, at least in 2020 and in 2019, came just before the second push much higher in gold prices. That's, again, with the exception of uh, the cycle in early 2021. So what we've seen in the ongoing cycle with this sort of a double bottom over here in March, so we're going to count this first dip into the end of the first cycle in gold. That was uh, in uh, late April. Looks like we are going to observe this second dip in optimism. Perhaps right now it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit early. Optimism index is still at 62. Perhaps you want to see this optimism index first drop somewhere below 60 before you want to jump back into your full positions in precious metals. Although if you look at uh, early 2020, optimism index didn't drop below 60. So basically what I'm trying to say is, I think it's likely gold slides a little bit lower over the next few days. But if you want to get back into the positions right now, it's also, I think, uh, perfectly fine. Once this uh, second daily cycle in the ongoing intermediate cycle finishes, this was our first cycle, here we are going to experience the declining phase of this second cycle, which will probably finish in the next few days. There will be a third cycle rally, which will possibly bring us to the, well, maybe to the top of the ongoing intermediate cycle. The ongoing intermediate cycle so far has been going on for around 88 days only. 
it's still a very young cycle. Usually these cycles last for half a year, so perhaps you would expect a cycle top, let's say somewhere around the midpoint, although the top might come much closer to the end of the cycle rather than to the middle of the cycle. So perhaps you might expect the cycle top um, more than four months into the cycle. So I am holding a large allocation to precious metals, but at the same time, I'm also holding a lot of cash to add over the next few days at, at this very likely dip. But if you just want to jump in right now, judging that today's low was the low for this short-term decline, that I think is also going to play out absolutely fine over the next several weeks. Next, let's move on to silver. Because gold is coming down, I do expect silver to correct down as well. Again, just over the next several days, I don't think this decline is going to take very, very long. The target range for silver over the next few days for me is based on the recent highs. That's at about 26.7 and the 50-day moving average is at about 26.6. .6. So the range around 26.6, 26.7 is uh, where I will get back into silver as well. Although, again, I do hold quite a sizable allocation to precious metals already. I just reduced that allocation by only about one-fifth. And lastly, let's have a look at the miners. GDX is also uh, coming down, of course, with gold. And again, I don't think the decline is going to be extremely painful because the intermediate cycle is still, as I said, relatively young. I am expecting a decline to these support zones based on three factors. The 200-day moving average, the 50-day moving average, which is coming up quite fast. There is the bottom of the Bollinger Bands and there is this recent high on GDX. All of them pointing to support area somewhere around 363 up to around uh, 36.9, let's call it 37. Is it possible that um, I'm wrong in this short-term expectation? Is it possible that once the markets in the US open, GDX simply shoots higher from here? Yes, of course, of course it is possible. Nobody knows the future. We are just trying to discuss what are some of the most likely scenarios based on the factors that we are observing. Hence, this video is only my opinion on the precious metals, and you might have a completely different opinion. In that case, please do share your opinion down in the comments below. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.